Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome to the channel. If you've had this code, hopefully this will help. Okay, so to illustrate it a little bit easier, this was the best picture or the clearest picture I could find of the back of the engine. Let's just try and get it. I don't want it to get too grainy. Um, yeah, if I just zoom in just that little bit more. So we've got the entire engine. This is the back of the engine here. And the part that I'm going to be dealing with is just this bit here. So just this. And so I'm going to be undoing one bolt there and there's going to be a bolt on the other side, uh, which you'll see in the video. I'm not going to be dealing with the rest of the EGR system here. So you've got the EGR cooler, which would go all the way down here. And you can see that it's fed by the uh, these coolant pipes here from the, uh, from the thermostat. Um, so I'm leaving the cooler in place and then there's this section also of the EGR. So this receives the exhaust gases going in that direction. And then this valve here, as you'll see, goes into this area and it's the action of this valve that we're going to be cleaning, which dictates how much of those gases then get cooled um, and and allowed then to be recirculated back on the cold air intake back into the engine in order to be combusted so it is just this part here it may turn out that these bits here are clogged and the coolers clogged but it's highly unlikely they they're big kind of cavernous spaces so it's the action of the EGR valve just here and the actuator you can see it's a vacuum actuated one I'll show you the vacuum um, nipple on the EGR valve but you can see the the tube coming here from this solenoid just here on some cars it's called a boost solenoid because it, um, it has an effect on uh, turbo performance and you can see you can you can actually follow the pipe work this is this is the great thing if you follow the pipe work this here comes from the the vacuum pump on the side of the engine and it's it delivers vacuum along this pipe here and then there's a plunger in here and that dictates whether that vacuum is allowed to then go on to the EGR actuator and when it pulls a vacuum there there's a spring plunger inside which uh, which then dictates the the flow in the EGR system and so I strongly suspect that it's this plunger here that is uh, seized and it's then affecting the flow through the rest of the system so th that's that's as clear as I can show it on in place on the engine and other engines will be exactly the same principle it's just that the the valve may be actuated by an electronic motor or whatever but on this it's a vacuum actuator and um, let's have a look at the car and let's see exactly what the problem is so there's no point showing the full process for getting access to it on this particular car because um, it varies from car to car. This one is a bit of a pain though because it requires uh, windscreen wiper removal, the windscreen scuttle and um, and even the windscreen mo wiper motor assembly which I'll take off in a second. And you can see the problem on this car. That's where the EGR is that I was showing you in the previous picture. So it's really tucked out of the way and uh, very difficult to get to. So with the windscreen wiper motor assembly and the scuttle, the metal scuttle replaced, this is the process I had to go through just to change the shock absorbers on this car a few years back. And um, and the and the glow plugs on it, well, they have to be probably the most difficult to access glow plugs um, out there. Uh, it certainly uh, ranks highly and they're the original plugs and the chances of th them ever getting changed is almost zero because uh, they'll almost certainly be uh, corroded in and access is appalling. Anyway back to the EGR that's what we're here for and uh, so here's the valve here and it's got the two bolts reasonably accessible on this particular one it was uh, T30, two T30 bolts and then just removing the vacuum pipe which 
delivers vacuum to the actuator so the, the valve can open when it's working properly. So with the bolts removed, um, it just needed a little bit of um, levering to get into the gap where the EGR actuator joins the rest of the engine. And uh, after a bit of levering, it was held in by uh, quite a bit of soot as well, I managed to get my hand in to remove the valve. And here it is in all of its lovely sooty glory. Looking absolutely disgusting and uh, it will certainly be no surprise that it was indeed seized. It wouldn't close. The end section just there was actually pretty much glued stuck through um, soot and like liquefied carbon. When, when carbon sets it becomes incredibly... Um, sticky almost like bonfire toffee and that was what was holding the valve shut inside the the main open space not too bad and so that's why i'm not in a particular rush apart from access to it is a nightmare i'm not in a particular rush to remove the rest of the egr components just an extra view just inside there any bits that i was able to reach so those caked up bits of sup I was able to just scrape those out, uh, grabbing most of it with like kitchen towel and uh, applying a bit of brake cleaner. So here's the valve itself and my vacuum tester was being a bit of a pain. It was building vacuum but the tester itself wasn't holding it. So, But I managed to fix it so I'll show you the proper test for the actuator in a little bit. But the main thing here was just to see how much vacuum has to be um, applied to the actuator to open it up and in the end it was around about 20 inches of mercury before it finally started freeing up and um, and that's basically way too much um, by the time if it's been sticking closed by the time the vacuum's built up to open it that moment's gone when the engine needed the valve open and so that's why the engine computer wasn't sensing flow at the correct time. The fact that it eventually opens when you apply tons of vacuum over time, that's no good. It needs to open much more sharper and earlier. And so that's what the cleaning process was for. Always just start with a stiff brush. Don't go in with metal tools on this. A stiff brush will get rid of most of the, um, you know, the the looser larger particles and then it's just a question of um, cleaning up the rest with carburetor cleaner throttle body cleaner which are effectively the same I only had brake cleaner so it just took me a little bit longer than I would have liked really uh, if I'd had a tin of carburetor cleaner it would have seen off the cleaning process much much quicker but I got there in the end and that's the main thing And then after copious amounts of cleaning, managed to get it all unstuck. And I also uh, sanded around this circular part where, where the valve enters the valve housing. Um, and so as a result of that, I managed to get it so it just doesn't stick at all. And now it starts to move once you've got around about 10 inches of mercury in there so it's a much lower point so when when the the EGR solenoid delivers that vacuum to the actuator the actuator is ready to move at that precise time so you then get the exhaust flow that the engine's expecting and yeah just cleaned up the surfaces around the, the circle there uh, because it was it was really quite sticky around that part and so I, I really took my time to make sure that there's no sticking in that area as soon as the vacuum's applied the valve opens nice and easily and, uh, and closes once the vacuum is taken off.
So then I managed to finally fix my vacuum tester, although zero is now at five. Uh, so it, it, uh, it, it's over reading. But the main thing is if zero is at five, then at 15 inches of mercury, um, it will actuate the, the valve. And not only that, I was able to do it so the vacuum tester now holds vacuum, so I was able to properly test the actuator that it can actually hold vacuum. And as you can see, once vacuum's built up, the actuator holds it. And that's one of the first tests, if you've got one of these vacuum uh, actuators, that's one of the first tests you need to do with it still on the car. Because if it's not able to hold vacuum, you may as well buy a new actuator because you're not going to be taking this apart to repair the diaphragm inside. Whereas on the car if it does hold vacuum then you hopefully shouldn't need to actually replace it you can just take it off the car clean it up and free up the movement and um, and it should restore the operation exactly like this has done and the code was cleared and early signs are that this problem with EGR faulty flow is now solved and that's it thanks very much for watching and uh, hope you find that useful